Okay, we're doing a power test to Safe and Sound Classic. All the power tests are done at 2.4 gigahertz. We're starting with a power level of minus 25 dBm and we're stepping up in 10 dBm increments. So, uh, minus 25 dBm, solid green. Minus 15 dBm, moderate. Minus 5 dBm, high. Plus 5 dBm, extreme and plus 15 dBm extreme flashing. So very accurate power differentiation. We're doing the uh, Cornet ED88, starting at minus 25 dBm, 0 0.001 milliwatts per meter squared, up to minus 15, or 0 0.01, minus five, uh, we're showing point Two, one, plus five, two point eight milliwatts per square meter, plus fifteen dBm is now jumping to thirty milliwatts per square meter. So, not very consistent with power measurements. Okay, we're rolling for the Acousticom two, minus twenty five dBm, showing point oh two volts per meter. Minus 15, we're showing 0.1 volts per meter. Minus 5 dBm, we're showing 0.3 volts per meter. 5 dBm, we're showing 1 volt per meter. Plus 15 dBm, we're showing somewhere between 3 and 6 volts per meter. So again, not, uh, not super accurate for power. Okay, we're looking at the Tri-Field TF2 in RF mode for power testing, starting at minus 15 dBm. Uh, we're showing, right now, we're showing 0 0.042 milliwatts per square meter, minus 5 dBm, 0.44 milliwatts per square meter, plus 5 dBm, 3.984 milliwatts per square meter, plus 15 dBm, and we're at 14.8. So the power scale on this meter is actually pretty good. Okay, we're starting at 100 microsecond pulse. Manual trigger and right trigger. Okay, meter responded. I'm gonna change the pulse width to 50 microseconds. Manual trigger and trigger. Looks good. Going down to 20 microseconds. Trigger. Looks good. 10 microseconds. Trigger. Five microseconds. Trigger. And for this, we'll just go down to three microseconds just because we know this meter can do that. Trigger, source. This is now the ED88 um, cornet meter starting with a hundred microsecond pulse and trigger. Looks good. We're going to reduce this down to 50 microsecond pulse. Trigger. Okay, it showed it. I'm going to go down to 20 microsecond pulses. Trigger. Nothing showed in the LED, and I saw a tiny little blip. Let's trigger again. Trigger. Yeah, we're seeing just a tiny little, um, tiny little peak there at, uh, this is at 20 microseconds. I don't know if it's worth going down to 10 microseconds for this. Okay, the Acousticom 2. 
we're starting at 100 microseconds. And the manual trigger, trigger. So the LED showed that. We'll go down to 50 microseconds. Trigger. LED showed it. Twenty microseconds. Trigger. Try it again. Trigger. Again. Trigger. So uh, it doesn't look like uh, twenty is working. Uh, we're going to do the tri-field meter at 100 microseconds um, just to show that there is, it's detecting a CW source. When I turn it on, we're at full scale, okay, it's showing 18 milliwatts per square meter. So if I send a narrow pulse, well, not a narrow, but a 100 microsecond pulse to it, and trigger. It doesn't do anything. We found on a previous video uh, that this thing does not respond to pulses that are less than uh, 9,000 microwatts per square meter. So very poor performance for digital mode. Thanks for sticking with us, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that and you learned a little bit. Uh, so this video was just to remind you about our pulse width tests and how well our meter performs uh, very, for very narrow pulses. So for fast streaming data like Bluetooth, uh, our meter picks it up quite regularly and uh, that some of the meters do quite well, some of them do not do as well, just the way it is. Um, but you also might have noticed at the beginning I posted a link for slt.co for the classic to get you 5% off. That link again is MOV05, just, just a little gift from us to you in this pandemic time. Take care. Stay safe.